Welcome to another episode of This Old Hoopty. In today's episode, we're going to be finishing off, or actually almost finishing off, the tankless water heater swap out. So if you guys aren't aware, if you look up here, this is where we left off last time. We bypassed the water heater, the tank water heater, and we are going to be installing a Stiebel Electron tankless water heater. Let's quickly go over what's involved in that, and then we'll get into the video. So of course you're going to need your water heater. I went with the Stiebel Eltron tankless, the Tempura Plus. This is a 28.8 kilowatt water heater. So it has the three elements as can be seen here. You have your terminal for the wires over here. Right here are your punch outs for your wiring. And over here is your three quarter inch NPT fittings for your hoses front you have a simple LCD screen to control the features which is basically just how hot or cold do you want this thing to be and that's that pretty simple in the grand scheme of things to get the water heater installed we've got some tap cons we're gonna go right into the concrete block we're gonna use shark bites three-quarter inch shark bites and we are going to use a hose kit for a water heater you could use a torch and sweat the pipes you can also use something like this and crimp the pipes it depends upon how you want to do things for me, I want to get this done quickly, so I'm going to use the shark bite fittings because everything is exposed, so if there's any leaks, I'm gonna see them. It's never gonna be behind a wall. Everything just shown will be in the description down below or to the side, so if you ever need to install a tankless or a tank water heater, go ahead and grab those parts and uh, knock yourself out. That being said, let's get right into the video. All right, guys, quick disclaimer. I'm not an electrician and I'm not a plumber. I'm just a guy on the internet in his garage working on his own things. So, that being said, you do you, I'll do me. If you feel like you could take on this project, go for it. If you don't, hire the proper licensed professional. Make sure they have insurance too. Let's get back to work. All right, so the first things we're gonna need for this project is going to be a small level and something to mark the holes in so we can get this mounted to the wall. So the level has a magnet on top. I'm just gonna stick it to the top here. Then I'm gonna figure out where on the wall I want this to be which is probably going to be somewhere around here. But I also need to make sure that this can open completely in case I ever need to work on it. So this is pretty much a good spot. So I'm going to put the level on the bottom because I can't see up there. And I believe that this is going to end up being a good place for it. So I'm just going to level it off, check our bubbles. There we go. All right, next up. Next up, you're going to need a hammer drill and the appropriate bit. In this case, I'm using this one. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just in case you can't, everything I use in this video, tools, parts, etc., will be listed in the description below or off to the side. So if you need anything, go over there and get it. In the meantime, I'm gonna get all the holes I marked off drilled out. Let me get something to stand on. All right, let's drill our holes. All right, so the tap cons that I had are 3 16 two and three quarters. That's what I'm gonna be putting in the wall, so I gotta make sure my, so I'm gonna to need to make sure my drill bit gets at least this amount of depth. All right, that'll do for that one. Let's get our screws in the wall so we can get this thing home. Okay, now we're gonna use our driver, get these tap cons into the concrete so we can hang our tankless water heater. Should be able to get it hung on those top two, then we'll get the bottom two while it's open. All 
there we go. We're gonna keep our level on here, make sure we tighten it down, and get it completely level. While we're screwing this in, we're going to keep an eye on the bubble here and make sure everything stays level. Okay, this isn't going anywhere. And as you can see, our bubble is showing level. So for today, because I don't have the conduit yet to run the wire across, we are going to get the plumbing done. So we're going to connect here to here, so that way we have our water running through our tankless, even though there's no power going to it, it'll just be cold water until there's power. Let's get started on that. So aside from our electrical information, the only thing we really need to know is which one of these is hot and which one of them is cold. Now, there's a washer and a filter on the cold side to keep any sediment from going up into the machine. So as long as we pay attention to where that is, that's on this side over here. So we know that this side here needs to go to this side here because this is where my water shutoff valve is. So this is the in feed and this will be the out going to here. To keep this simple, we're gonna come right across to here and on this one, we're gonna come right over the top to here. Very easy. All right, once again, I'm gonna to have to use the valve over here and shut off the water to my house so I can take out my temporary bypass and get this and this connected. Give me a second. Let me let everybody in the house know that I'm doing this and I'll shut the water off. As explained in the beginning of the video, we're gonna keep this very simple. We're gonna use two wrenches, our quarter gated steel water heater pipes, obviously one for the hot, one for the cold. We're gonna need a little pipe thread and we're gonna use two shark bites with three quarter inch thread on one end and the three quarter inch shark bite on the other. All right, let's get our water to the house off. Now these shouldn't have anything coming through it. I'm just gonna turn on a faucet inside so I can clear out this pipe. So I'll go to whatever's behind here. And this one. So as soon as these stop flowing, we can get those disconnected. Still going. Well, that's always fun. I'm gonna have to at some point replace this, uh, at some point I'm gonna have to replace that valve because as you can see, that's off. And we're still dripping with the water. So let me get the main one outside. This is the main one for the whole house. There we go. This doesn't make a big bit of a difference. It does nothing. But as you can see now we have no water. Now that our water is actually off, let's get this disconnected and connect our new lines. All right, first things first, let's get our old shark bites disconnected over here. We're gonna use this shark bite to use these you just put this end up against the plastic seal and push and it will slide off i'm gonna put one on each side over here and just kind of pull this way Now that my non-working valve is working because there's no water left in the line, it's pretty much all over the floor, let's get the in over to the in. To do that, like I said, we're going to be using the 3 quarter inch NPT threaded and a 3 quarter inch sharp bite end here. 
So we already know this is nice and clean because we did it last time. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna push it right onto here. There we go. Uh, now we can go from here to here. Since we know this is our inside, we know it's not hot, so we're going blue for cold. Let's get a little of the thread seal on both of these. Now that we have some tape on here, let's get everything connected. Okay, we've got this hand tightened. Let's get our other one together. Let's get this hand tightened for the hot side. This is the side without the filter. It's gonna go hot to hot inside the house. All right, and now, last but not least, this one over here. And last but not least, the hot to the inside. Now I don't want to have any real pressure on the pipe, that's why I use these bendable ones. Putting these on is pretty simple, you just need to make sure that little plastic insert is in the center of the pipe and then you just slide it into place where you've marked it off. And now we take our two wrenches, get one on the top, one on the bottom and just tighten it down a little. All I'm doing is making sure that the little rubber gasket inside here is compressed enough to where it is leak free. Now let's turn the water back on to the house and we're gonna go inside and check for leaks. We know our water's on because I left this open. Now we'll let that build up pressure for a minute or two and we'll check all of our ends here. So far we're looking pretty good. So you guys can see what we did here. This is the side here coming in from the street, goes through a filter, goes into the tankless water here, heats up and comes out the hot side and goes to the rest of the house. Ignore that, that's actually a cold line that I've jumped to the other side of the house due to the pipe being broken down below. Before I start working on the sub panel here in the next video, I am also going to remove this armored cable and put a cover on that outlet over there because this will no longer be used. This was a timer that I used to turn on and off the water heater that used to be here. Okay guys, I don't have my sub panel and my extra breakers yet, so I'm waiting on those and I will get those installed, I believe, beginning of next week. So I will film that as well and I'll get that out to you as a part two of this video so you can see how to install a tankless water heater. Your amperage will probably be different than mine unless your house and your amount of faucets, all that stuff is the same as mine, but I figured I would record it and post it anyways. You get the basic idea. The only thing that varies is really the wiring and the amount of breakers and you may or may not need a sub panel. You may be able to go right to your panel because you have open spaces. I don't. So that's gonna bring us to the end of another video. You guys know what to do. Like it if you like, don't if you don't. Subscribe to keep up with my latest shenanigans and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.